Hi, I'm Sister Geraldine Schmidt, and you're listening to Musings from a Catholic Evangelist. Some time ago, there was a friend of mine who was traveling back from Ireland, and on the airplane with him was this um, young man who was emigrating from Ireland to the United States. His family was quite poor, and he was hoping to uh, get a job in the United States and s send his check back to his family. And he was guaranteed employment. He actually had it all set. He had the telephone number and the address, and he was these individual was supposed to meet them at the airport. Okay, so they go through through customs, and this my friend was curious on meeting this individual who would hire somebody sight unseen from another part of the world. So they were gathering around the, the airport, picking up their luggage and whatever. And this the gentleman, the young gentleman, Iris was Patrick, of course. True story, true, true name. I didn't change his name. True, true name. And nobody came up. Nobody showed up for him. So the hope and the energy was like, now there was panic because he only had one change of clothes and he brought no money for him with him. So, oh my goodness. Well, my friend was about to change this. So his person, the person who picked him up, he said, um, go, uh, go take Patrick for, for a meal. Let me, let me do a, make, make a follow-up phone call. He called the, the mother house of the Sisters of Christian Charity, the mother house of the Sisters of my congregation, asking if they needed a, a um, maintenance man, because there was one that had just left and the job wasn't even posted yet. And the sister who was in charge of that said, yeah, why? He goes, okay, um, I'll get back to you. What happened then is he went back with Patrick, my friend went back to Patrick and said to Patrick, let me have your phone number of a reference in Ireland. And with that, he called Ireland. Now this is before cell phones. So this was money down a pay phone here, you know? Okay, so this was definitely some of those, one of those things. And um, he called Ireland and it was earlier during the day, so it actually cut somebody alive. The references was, it was Im Im impeccable. Meanwhile, um, his friend was, was, and the sister was interviewing Patrick over the phone. And sure enough, Patrick was hired by us and wound up working for us for 30 years and every single week, he sent his check back to, the, to his family. So much so that his, his nieces and nephews considered him the wealthy uncle. Because whenever he went back to visit Ireland, he always brought toys for them. Uh, well, yeah. This story about immigration really reminded me of our next servant of God, Mother Maria Coppice. Mother Maria Coppice is a foundress of the Sisters of Casimir which is a small congregation uh, and that worked within our diocese. She came in eight, 1880 from Lithuania to be her brother's housekeeper. And her brother was a priest of the Scranton diocese that served Lithuanians. And she was very much taken back by the immigrants in Pennsylvania and the struggle to maintain their ethnic not so much purity, but their ethnic di diverse identity in the midst of a, molting, a, a melting pot. And she was convinced that this had to happen. So, and she was also realized that she was called to religious life. So she did, she went back to Switzerland and um, did some formation set, uh, in a group of congregation in Switzerland. And then finally, Bishop, Bishop, Bishop Shanahan, one of our bishops of our diocese, gave her his approval to begin a congregation dealing with Lithuanian immigrants in Pennsylvania. She finished her formation with the Sister Servants of Immaculate Heart of Mary, the IHMs, which also very much involved in our diocese. And then she broke um, with them after her formation and, and taking vows. Bishop Shanahan gave her a plot of land in Saint Cas in um, Mount Carmel, and in six months after they moved to Mount Carmel, they had a school, 
with 70 students. Incredible. Um, they focused on dealing with Lithuanian immigrants, getting them training, getting them housing, getting them education, and also encouraging the, 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 the honor and the respect for their Lithuanian heritage, which is just incredible. She built a mother house outside of Chicago because in the Chicago community was the largest Lithuanian congregation. And she believed that immigration, were to, uh, the, the two pillars of her work were grace and hope. Grace is, is the foremost bottom line foundation of what God gives us and the, the foundation of her, of her entire congregation. Hope is an offspring of that because if you have grace and believe in God, then you hope for a better life. Isn't that what em any immigrants coming to anything new, any new country or any new beginning have that hunger for hope for a better life? So servant of God, Mother Maria Kapas is an epitome, epitomizes that gift of the hope for an immigrant. Just like Patrick saw in the story that I shared with you before, that hope for a new life, the hope for a better life, the hope that God has something greater for them. You're listening to Musings from a Catholic Evangelist, and I'm Sister Geraldine.